Hey everyone, thank you for joining me. I am a guy called Joe. This is Bootstrapping Tools Community Support, where we help scrappy bootstrappers just like yourself figure out how to overcome some of the hurdles that they're facing and reach out to the community for support. Now, before we dive into today's video, make sure to check out our YouTube channel. We got lots of videos up there that go through all sorts of different low code and no code solutions out there, such as Retool, Google Apps Scripts, Google Sheets, Google Data Studio, and as well as many others. If you don't see what you're looking for, feel free to shoot an email over to feedback at bootstrapping.tools. We'll be happy to take a look at that app and possibly make a video just for you. Now, today's video, we're gonna be uh, walking through uh, this problem that uh, Ophi has put up into Reddit. Uh, and essentially what they're asking for is how to automatically add a, the name of a new tab or sheet that was created in a Google spreadsheet to a specific place in your sheet. So when I was going through this and, and thinking about it, what it really sounded like to me was like a table of contents, essentially. If you have like 50 different sheets uh, or tabs within your, your Google spreadsheet or more or less, whatever that might be, uh, you might wanna just generate a full list uh, of that somewhere so that you can keep track of all the different sheets and possibly even you know just make a quick link to click through to that specific sheet uh, or, or tag without having to horizontally scroll through the bottom um, of your spreadsheet. If you're familiar with Google Sheets, um, you probably know the pain of having to scroll through many, many, many different tabs, um, but a table of contents would, would definitely help in that regard. So the way that we're gonna be doing it is we're gonna be using Google Sheets and then we're gonna be using Google Apps Scripts. And Google Apps Scripts has a uh, library within it called Spreadsheet App, which lets you quickly get all the sheets that are available within a spreadsheet and then also get the names of those spreadsheets. And then we're gonna do a little bit of finagling in there uh, to create little hyperlinks out of those, which will allow you to uh, create a list of them uh, that you, the user or yourself can click through to get directly to that tab without having to horizontally scroll or anything like that. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into it. All right, so up on the screen, we have a blank Google Sheet um, that I just created and then quickly added a bunch of tabs on the bottom over here. So you can see we got uh, one that's called table of contents and then sheet nine, sheet 10, sheet 11, and actually goes all the way through. I think I just mashed that button. So I don't know how many we have here, but it's a lot. And as you can see, we can have to horizontally scroll and that can get really annoying if you're looking through a bunch of them um, and you don't know like how to where in the index or, or the placement or the order uh, that the tab you're looking for is. So this is a really nice way. Um, to do this using a, ta a table of contents and you're just gonna list it out uh, one row by row and then link out to it so you can easily get to where you're trying to go. This is gonna help the uh, the the request as well where anybody who's creating a sheet, you're gonna be able to use the script and just generate and add that over here so you know exactly uh, what someone has added. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our script editor. So that's gonna be located under tools. Click on that and then you're gonna select script editor. Now, once you select that, that's gonna open up another tab here that's gonna look just like this and it's gonna to default to adding in uh, a function called my function. And so we're just gonna start writing our code here so we can actually rename this one right here. We're gonna say generate TOC and we can just leave that uh, function without any parameters, we're gonna run it just as is. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna generate, uh, we're gonna declare a variable called SS, which is short for spreadsheet. And then we're gonna say spreadsheet app, which is a built-in library that Google Apps Scripts provides to us, which lets us uh, make a bunch of um, calls or, or access a lot of functions that Google's already pre-written for us to manipulate the spreadsheet itself. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get active spreadsheet, which is already on the top over here. So now we have uh, SS is uh, equal or set to the active spreadsheet that we're working with. And then now we're gonna create um, a variable called sheets and we're gonna add all the sheets to it. And to do that, we're gonna say ss.get sheets and that function itself is going to allow um, the sheets object to be added to sheets and once we have that we're going to just iterate through that and i'm going to show you exactly how this looks we're going to do i a for loop so i equals zero then i is less than sheets dot length we're going to keep it super simple and then i plus plus to iterate through it and right here let's just go ahead and console log the output that we want so that's going to be sheet do a colon and then I'm going to do sheets i dot get name. 
So when we run this, what we expect to happen is within the uh, the console, the, the output, it's going to just say sheet colon and then the name of the sheet um, that that it found within the array of sheets uh, that are that is already in our spreadsheet. So going back to our spreadsheet, we have a lot of these. We're going to expect the first one to be 9, 10, 11. Uh, it'll probably pull in table of contents as well, since that is one of the sheets here. But it's going to go all the way um, to the end, listing out every single sheet that we have available here. So let's go ahead and run this. I'm seeing the execution log, execution start it, and it just spits out every single one of them. So from the first one, just table of contents, all the way through to sheet eight, which is the last sheet that we have in that order. So now that we have that, uh, we probably don't want table of contents uh, listed in there. So we can actually start I for off of one as opposed to starting off with zero. So position zero in the array is the first one and position one is the second one. So we run this again. What we're going to see is it's only going to give us all the sheets with the numbers after it and not the first one, which is table of contents. So the next thing we're going to do now is uh, we want to get all those names into one um, you know, one array so that we can feed that back into our spreadsheet, specifically the table of contents spread, uh, sheet or tab. So here we're going to say var sheet names and we're going to set this open to a open array that's empty and then now instead of doing this console log we're going to say sheet names dot push so push for the array uh, object there and then we're going to put this into an array so that each one gets its own row remember when you're pushing data into a, uh, a spreadsheet using uh, code in a programmatic way you have to think of it as a grid of arrays so you're going to have one giant array um, well, the square brackets and then within each row, um, each position of it, you're going to have your own array so that that's going to indicate one row and then another and then another and then within the uh, individual nested arrays, those are going to be columns. So over here, what we're going to do is we're going to do sheets. I uh, just like we did in the console log before get name. All right. So what this is going to do is we're going to get all the different um, names of those sheets and that's going to output uh, individual rows itself so before we run this code uh, let's put in a console log at the end of this outside of the for loop and what this is going to do is we're going to have it spit out what the sheet names value is just so we can see that before we start adding uh, code to write to the spreadsheet itself so hit run and as you can see here so that's the first square bracket and then the closing bracket, which makes it into a grid. And then each position here is its own array, which will serve as the individual rows that we want to apply to our spreadsheet in just a little bit here. So now, now that we have that, we're going to say var, let's call this TOC sheet. And then we're going to say SS, so it's spreadsheet, that variable that we declared earlier. We're going to say get sheet by name and we call this table of contents and just to do a real quick check let's go back over to our spreadsheet and then table of contents is the name uh, that we assign to that particular tab right over here you can actually highlight all that and copy it if just in case we want to make sure we didn't make any typos go back over here highlight this section just paste that in make sure we get that and now what we're going to do is we're going to set a range so think about the range itself um so we can say a toc range here you might want to just put it in row a perhaps right we'll just keep it simple just start from the very top left and just uh paste it all the way down through so you'll see range we're going to say toc sheet dot get range and over here we're going to say one to one which means, you know, starting from row one and column one, which is essentially uh, an A1 notation, A1. Uh, so cell A1. And then now we need to do the number of rows, which is going to be determined by sheet names dot length. So we'll put that in sheet names dot length. And then number of columns also depends on sheet names. So we're going to say sheet names. We're going to take the first position in there dot length. All right. So. Now what we have is the number of rows is set to the full length of sheet names. 
and then the column length is going to be set to the first position in our sheet names that nested array uh, and the length of that so which is actually comes out to be you know one so because we only have one column in there let's go ahead and save this and then let's run it and what we oh wait nope not yet we also need to set the uh the data so we're going to say toc underscore range dot set values with an s we're going to set that equal to sheet names so save that i'm going to run it uh length is not defined let's see here so that is row 11 sheet names length is not oh, i put a comma instead of a period uh, make sure you uh uh take a look at your your writing typos are, are a big thing when it comes to coding at least for me, I, I mean, and a lot of the other programmers that I've spoken to, that was a, a rough. Uh, it's hard to see all of it, but all right. So we have execution completed. We'll go back over to our sheet. We can see here that it has been populated. We have 24 different sheets uh, or tabs in total. So now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a hyperlink over here so that we can quickly um, just link over directly to that sheet. Uh, instead of having to horizontally scroll down here the entire time. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to use something called the hyperlink um, formula. So actually going back to our spreadsheet, let me just show you what that looks like. So there's a hyperlink formula that where you use a URL and then you use a link label. So what we can do here is we're going to say the URL is actually going to be equal to this URL and instead we're going to replace everything that comes after the GID equals we're going to replace that section with the ID of it so what we'll do is we're going to say let's actually copy this we're not going to put this here right now we're going to put this in code and we're going to determine that up here so we're going to say bar URL equals Remove this for now. ID plus, and then we're actually going to do sheet i dot get i cheat ID. All right. So what this is going to do now is it's going to create this URL um, based on the sheet ID. That way, this whole spreadsheet ID and everything. And then after the GID equals, that's how you're going to set specifically. This is the, um, the tab that I want to focus on. So once we have that now let's create our text. So we're going to say bar formula equals, we're going to do with single quotes here, hyperlink open parentheses. And then we need to open it up with a double quote. All right. And now we're going to do URL plus, and then we're going to open up another single quote so that we can close that off with a double. And then we need to put in the text there. Um, link to tab. And then we're going to close that out with the parentheses over here. So within our array, this is where we're going to now put in the formula. And then this should all just work because now sheet names zero dot length should equal to two and it should just put it all in there. So when we hit run, let's see if we get any errors. Doesn't look like it, but we do have all the, uh, all the data looking like it's working. So we go back over here, we can see link to tab is working. And if we go, let's say to sheet number 25 here, we click on that. It's going to bring us straight to the tab and there's nothing in here right now but at least we don't have to horizontally scroll each time. We're going to go back to the contents. It means to scroll all the way down to the very ends, the very left of it. All right, you can combine this if you want. Um, you can make the name of it, uh, the link. It's really up to you, however you want to do that. Um, and if you did want to do that, you essentially just instead of making this name uh, that, you can set it equal to sheet I dot name. And you would just have to give it a couple of more additions over here. So that's going to be this plus that. If we do it like that, 
then we remove this formula. Let's actually go here, remove all this out. When we run this, doing it like this will make it so that, actually hold up, sorry. Doing it like this, so we're gonna do formula instead. When we run this, what's gonna happen now is this all becomes a link, but we, another typo, you need to have the comma. Have that, run this one more time. And we're missing per our quotes over here as well. So right there. It's always about typos when it comes down to it. We hit run. All right, now, there we go. Actually move this. So now it says sheet 10, 16, and you can click on it to go over there and then just scroll all the way back to the left to get your table of contents. Um, so this is essentially how you do it. Just make sure that, you know, we missed the comma before and then we missed the quote, uh, qu a quotation mark. We run this, see the output look, is looking pretty good. The formula looks pretty good. We go back to our sheet. Everything seems to be as expected. Now, if you wanted to run this automatically, uh, you can leave it like this. And then what you can do is actually go to tools. So up here on the tool section, click on that and then go down to macros. And you can say import. When we click on that, it's going to ask you to add a function. So we only have one right now. So it's generate TOC. So you can add that over here. So uh, this. And then you can just run the macro from here. So running scripts and it'll just generate it each and every single time. So we move that. Let me show you that one more time. Macros generate TOC. This is a really nice way for you to just automatically update your table of contents uh, whenever you come into the spreadsheet itself. Uh, there's also another way um, that you can do it with, uh, with triggers, uh, but we'll cover that in a uh, video later on. If you have interest in it, uh, I, I can make it sooner than later. Just leave a comment uh, in the section below. We're happy to make that video sooner than later where we show you how to use triggers to actually automatically update your table of contents as people insert or remove uh, different tabs within your spreadsheet. But that's it for this video. If you did run into any issues, also feel free to drop a comment in the section below. We're happy to help, uh, whether that's just to make the next video a little faster, or if you did run into like actual issues here, we're happy to take a look at what, uh, what that error is and help you work through it. Um, of course, if you did like this video for community support, make sure to hit that like button. It's the best way to uh, support this channel and help us continue to make content for you and all you Scrappy Bootstrappers out there. We have lots of videos coming up, uh, especially the next part of this one. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and also the bell so that you can get notified when we release the next video. All right, I'm a guy called Joe. This is Bootstrapping Tools Community Support. It's been a pleasure and we're out.